Nasa 11th week na po tayo ng series nating Redefined. Okay, ang bilis, no? This is a 16-week series. So when we started this series, July lang ata or August. Ngayon, September na, Christmas na. Curious lang ako, sino sa inyo, tinayo nyo na yung Christmas tree sa bahay nyo? Oy, meron na astig, okay? So I think it's about time maglagay na, lang, maglagay na rin din tayo dito, yung mga Christmas lights, para mas ma-feel na natin. Okay, anyway... Just in case, it's your first time here, you're joining us, ito, inabutan mo yung series na to. Basically, this series is about having a redefinition what Christianity is all about. Okay, ang goal natin is maredefine natin bilang isang Kristiyano na naniniwala sa Panginoon, ano bang ibig sabihin talaga nun? Ano ba yung mamuhay tayo ng ibig sabihin ng ikaw, magiging testimony ka according to the kingdom of God? So ngayon, 11 week uh, na po natin, pang 11 week na natin, okay, ang pag-uusapan po natin is God and possessions, okay? Which means, pag-uusapan natin, uh, it has something to do with wealth, property, or we're gonna talk about money, okay? So for some of you, maybe you're thinking, ate ka lang, but parang sa dami-dami na pwede natin pag-usapan, but kailangan natin pag-usapan ang pera sa church, Ito na nga ba sinasabi ko dito eh, pera-pera lang ata tayo dito eh, okay? Yan na, yan na, yan na, mamaya tingnan mo, manghihingi na yan, okay, okay. Did you know that if you're going to study the, the Bible well, okay, the Bible offers 500 verses on prayer, less than 500 verses on faith, and here's what's interesting, but more than 2,000 verses on money and possessions. Which means, ito pong pag-uusapan natin, it's a big deal, okay? Importante po ito. Okay? Mahalaga po ito. Kasi pag hindi po natin na-redefine ng tama ang purpose ng pera, okay, with regards to our relationship with God, okay, marami pong pwede mangyari sa atin. At naniniwala naman po ako na tayo bilang Kristiyano, alam naman natin to na money is not the most important thing in our life. Amen? But here's the problem. Did you know that money can affect the most important thing in our life? Kahit alam natin na hindi ito yung pinaka-importante, pero pwede po niyang maapektuhan ng sobrang malaki yung pinaka-importante sa buhay natin. Why is that? Because every financial decision is a spiritual decision. Yung bawat expenses po natin, kung saan napupunta yung pera natin, yung pagpasok ng sweldo natin, yung mga property na meron tayo, did you know that it is a spiritual decision? Why is that? The Bible says that the, the, the earth is the Lord. Lahat po nang nandito sa mundo, itong mundo na to, sa Panginoon daw po to. Siya po yung nagmamayari. So ibig sabihin, we are just mere stewards of God's provision, of His wealth, of His property. So which means, bilang isang Kristiyano, lahat po nung pag, paggamit natin ng pera or ng kayamanan, it's a spiritual decision. Pero ito po yung problema sa mundong ginagalawan natin. May mga extreme na paniniwala na ang pera daw po ay masama. Sino sa inyo narinig nyo na yun na, you know, law, uh, money is evil or money is demonic, di ba? Pag may pera ka, pag marami kang pera, ay masama yan. Dapat pag kristyano ka, dapat naghihirap ka. Di ba nga, sabi nga sa Beatitudes, blessed are the poor. So pag marami kang pera, siguro masama tong tao na to. Ah, korap yan. Siguro hindi nagbabayad ng tax or, you know. So ngayon, ikaw ngayon, may, may ganong thinking na parang ang mangyayari, pag, pag nakasuot ng maayos, masama. Okay? But some would think na magiging masaya ako pag may pera akong ganto Or pag nakuha ko na yung iPhone 8, lalabas na siya. Di ba? Pinag-iipunan mo na, inaantay mo na yung bonus, Christmas bonus, di ba? Nagpe-pray ka sana yung, yung supervisor ko, yung manager ko, or yung CEO namin, merong 13th month, 14th month, 15th month, 16th month, di ba? Lahat na lang ng buwan, laging may bonus, di ba? Because we live in a world na pag may pera ka, masaya ka. Tama po ba? Uy, ayaw umamin. And I believe we're all guilty of this. Yung iba nga sa atin, tumataya pa rin sa loto hanggang ngayon eh. Thinking na manalo lang ako sa loto, maging milyonaryo lang ako, mapatayo ko lang yung bahay ko, tsaka yung dream car ko, I'm gonna be, ano, alam mo yun, I'm gonna, magta-tights naman ako, magdo-donate naman ako sa church. Pag nangyari na yun, magsuserve na ako sa church. So those are just some of the extreme thinking, okay, pagdating sa pera. But this afternoon, our goal po is, 
will be able to understand. Okay, ano ba yung, yung pananaw ng Panginoon pagdating dito sa pera? Kasi, di ba, hindi naman po masama ang pera. The love of money is the root of evil. But how do we handle righteously yung wealth? I believe this. But did you know that righteous living leads to righteous handling of wealth? Ibig sabihin po, kung tama po yung pananaw natin, we have this Christ-like character in us, yung Holy Spirit po nagmamanifest sa atin, nag-overflow sa atin, and we're being led by the Holy Spirit because we know that our financial decision is a spiritual decision. Therefore, we get to honor God sa bawat paghandle po ng pera na meron tayo. So it doesn't matter kung nagpunta ka ngayon dito, limang piso na lang yung pera mo, at hindi mo alam kung paano ka uuwi, wala kang pamasahe, or million-million yung nasa banko mo ngayon, come on now, di ba? Iba ka, astig ka. it doesn't matter. Pantay-pantay tayo pagdating sa mata ng Panginoon. Okay? Pero ngayon malalaman natin kung ano yung spiritual condition natin as we go through this Kumbaga, this preaching, okay? Ito po yung verse na gagamitin natin will be in Matthew 6, okay? Starting in verse 19. Basahin natin, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor dust rust destroys and where thieves do not break and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? And verse 24, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Okay, and actually, we're going to dissect this, this passage of the scripture in three parts, okay? So, yung first part po, where do we store? The next part is yung, uh, what do we see? Okay, and the last part is, who do we serve? Bakit in the form of question, okay? Bakit in the form of question? Kasi ganito. Ang gagawin po natin yun, para maiba lang as we go through this preaching, we're gonna go through like a diagnostic test. Okay, pag nagpapacheck up tayo, di ba parang yung mga doktor, may mga tinatanong siya sa atin, di ba, o uh, uh, ano nangyari sa'yo, kailan pa yung ubo mo, or kailan ka pa nahihilo, mga ganun, may mga question. And then after that, the doctor would formulate a diagnosis. Tama? So when I think about this, we're gonna, kumbaga, ask ourselves these questions in order for us to have a diagnosis, kamusta ba yung relationship natin kay God pagdating sa pera. So again, those are the questions. Where do we store? What do we see? And who do we serve? Why is that? Bakit diagnostic question? May kakilala kayo na mukha namang healthy sa labas, pero pag nalaman mo yung, yung, yung heart condition niya, hindi pala healthy, tapos magugulat ka na lang, ay, ang bata-bata pa niya, inatake na siya. Mukha naman siyang healthy, nag exercise naman siya. Di ba? And could it be, or it's possible po, na mangyari sa atin siya? na mukha tayong healthy sa panglabas natin, sa relationship natin kay God, pero sa loob po natin, medyo hindi na pala maganda yung nangyayari. And it's just a matter of time, atakihin tayo sa puso, wag naman po sana. Okay? So sabi dyan, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Alam, alam naman po natin yung treasure. Yung treasure po, it's something na sobrang mahalaga. Sobrang mamahalin, sobrang precious, sobrang important. And if I were to ask you, bawat isa sa atin, meron tayong pinapahalagahan. Meron tayong mga tinetreasure. Tama po ba? But here's what the Word of God is telling us. Kung ano man po yung mga tinetreasure natin, huwag daw po nating i-invest saan? Dito sa earth. Why is that? Kasi kung mag invest tayo, ito po yung sinasabi ng Bible. Mabubulok, masisira, at pwedeng manakaw. So ano yung mga tinetreasure natin yun na inaalagaan natin yun, na pinoprotektahan natin, maybe nasa bahay, nasa bangko? Ito po, sobrang clear po yung sinasabi ng Bible. Na kahit anong gawin natin, masisira at masisira yung mga bagay na yan. And I like why Jesus was addressing this. During uh, their time, alam nyo po, tatlong bagay yung pinaka-tinetreasure nila. Number one, clothing. 
Okay, sobrang mahal po ng damit sa time nila. Okay, so kaya nga 'di ba, alam niyo yung yung nangyari kay Akan, yung kumuha siya ng mga mga nag, nag hindi niya binalik lahat ng ano, spoil, so kumuha siya ng nangupit siya, okay, dahil ay teka lang mamahalin to, okay? Or hindi lang clothing, actually food. Okay, food supply. Kung babaralan natin yung Bible natin, many times they would exper- uh, experience famine. So yung food non sobrang importante yon At wala pa po silang refrigerator non So mga mamahalin po yung mga food non At hindi lang yon yung mga precious stones. So yung mga disciples, they're thinking, teka lang, for as long as I have these things, then I'm gonna be secured. Basta maganda yung damit ko, basta nakakain ako sa araw-araw, at may mga konti akong jamante, masaya ako. And sometimes, if we can be honest enough, dito rin po natin dinodraw yung security natin. Basta okay yung damit ko. Diba? Naka, naka, may ano pa, may buhaya pa. Diba? Alam mo pa, pag ay peke yung suot niya kasi nakasarado yung bibig sa akin. Naka, nakabukas. Diba? Or maybe food supply. Pag mas marami kang grocery sa bahay mo, you feel so secure na, ay teka lang, yes, at least mabubuhay tayo ngayong cut off na to. Okay? Or pag may mga jamante ka sa bahay. But here's the thing. Punta po kayo sa mga, mga village, okay? Or maybe nakatira ka sa village. Pag pumasok kayo sa isang village, sabi na lang natin sa, ano bang village dito yung talagang mga big time yung nakatira? Siguro sa Valle Verde or Forbes or McKinley. You know, nakakatawa pong isipin. One time nakapasok ako sa isang village na sobrang mga mayaman daw yung nakatira. Alam mo, yung, yung mga gate ang tataas, Tapos may ang daming camera. Tapos pag pag kumatok ka, bigla may tatahol na aso. Di mo alam. Tapos may mga may military pa dun sa may gate nila. You know what I'm saying? You know what's the problem? The greater we possess these things, actually the greater we become insecure. Kasi kung dito po natin i-draw yung security natin, alam naman natin na pwedeng manakaw, pwedeng masira, at pwedeng mabulok itong mga bagay na to. Kaya ngayon, takot na takot tayo, yun nga lang nangyari sa BPI, di ba? Lahat tayo nagpanik, ikulin natin lahat ng pera. Hello? That's why Jesus was addressing this to them. Now, wag tayong mag-invest sa mga bagay na to. Huwag nating i-treasure itong mga bagay to, na to. But don't get me wrong. I'm not saying sumamaya, pastor, kukunin mo lahat ng pera namin. No, 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 no. I'm not saying those things. Okay? Kung mayaman ka ngayon, it's not necessarily wrong. Okay? I believe pinagpahala ka ng Panginoon, binibless ka ng Panginoon dahil may purpose yan. So don't feel bad kung marami kang pera. Okay? Feel good about it. Okay? So yung mga mayaman, tuma- tumatangong ganyan, kilala ko na kung sino mayaman dito. Come on, God bless you. Okay? But here's what the Bible says. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. I like this. Jesus was giving the disciples an eternal perspective. Kasi lahat ang thinking ng tao, teka lang, kailangan, okay yung buhay ko dito sa mundo. Without even understanding that this world that we're living in, it's only created by God in six days. Pero si God, from the very beginning, He was there. He was eternally existing. No one created God. Now here is Jesus telling the people, huwag kang mag-invest sa mundong ito kasi masisira to, mabubulok yan, at pwedeng manakaw yan. But you invest in what is eternal kasi kahit anong mangyari, walang magnanakaw sa heaven. Kung meron man makapasok, papadala niya sa impyerno. But for sure, wala makakapasok doon. At hindi daw mabubulok. Imagine this. Alam niyo po, pag nasa heaven na tayo, sinasabi po ng Bible yung lalakaran po natin ginto. So saan ka pa? Di ba parang yung kalsada, ginto? So hindi kayo magtitik-tik doon. Teka lang, uwi ko tong ginto na to. Mayaman po ang Panginoon natin. Sabi mo nga ulit sa katabi mo, mayaman si Papa. So which means we are to put our treasures in heaven. Don't be, ano alam mo yun, yung, yung parang yung, yung, pan, yung pananaw natin sobrang temporal. It's like this. May mga kilala tayo, mga OFW, di ba? OFW, may kakilala kayo. Just to illustrate, uh, ang OFW, ang thinking ng isang OFW, magtatrabaho ko sa bansang ganto, okay, kikita ko ng malaki kasi gusto ko, 
yung pamilya ko, magkaroon ng magandang bahay, uh, mag-aaral yung anak ko, and all that. Okay? But for some reason, yung iba, nagtatagal na doon kasi parang, alam mo yun, eh, sige, okay na, masaya na ako dito. Pero ang unang reasoning nun is para maging maganda yung buhay niya because he knows na he's not, he's, he's not meant to stay there forever in that nation. Temporary lang yun. So lahat ng sesweldohin niya, sinesave up niya at ipinapadala saan? Sa pamilya. Para pampagawa ng bahay, pampaaral sa anak. And when I think about that, it somehow kind of look like this. When we lay up treasures in heaven, we have this thinking na ang buhay po natin dito temporary lang. We are being called by God to work in this world for His honor and for His glory. And every time we would live according to the calling of God, actually, we are laying up treasures in heaven. Kasi alam natin, darating yung time, magkikita-kita tayo dun. Kasama ang ating Panginoon. Pero ang tanong, kasama ka ba? Okay? But seriously, and maybe you're thinking now, okay, Brian, uh, sobra namang, ano yan, sobrang big nung idea na maglay ako ng treasure in heaven. Diba? Parang on a practical note, okay, on our day-to-day activity, parang paano ko siya gagawin, diba? So I think this is a good question for us. How do we lay up treasures in heaven while we are here on earth? Diba kung nagtatrabaho ka, Kung isang nanay ka, kung tatay ka, estudyante ka, or single professional ka, uh, yung ang goal lang ba, magka-jowa ako, tas magka-asawa ako, ganoon, okay? Anong ibig sabihin? You know, maybe you're thinking, meron bang ATM sa banko? Mag-open ba ako ng account? Di ba? No. This, in Colossians 3, I like this book. Because isa po sa mga tema ng book na to, okay, nung sinulat ni Paul to, he was addressing the people to have an eternal perspective. At sabi dyan, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. So kung nanay ka, tatay ka, estudyante ka, businessman ka, anumang sitwasyon ng buhay mo or season ng buhay mo, I think this verse it's a good reminder for all of us. Sa lahat daw ng gagawin natin, let's do it for the Lord. So how do we do it? Let's do it with integrity. Kung kailangan natin magbayad ng tax, pay the tax. Eh, isipin natin, eh, kinukurakot lang naman ng government yun eh. Ang Panginoon na pong bahala sa kanila. Let's do it excellently. Tatrabaho tayo sa isang kumpanya. Wag tayo puro Facebook. Di ba? Pag pumasok ka ng 9 o'clock, be there on time. Wag puro late. Kristiyano tayo. Hello. And let's do it with humility. Ang favor po ng Panginoon nasa atin. Sobrang favorable tayo kasi yung Holy Spirit nasa atin. So, God would really bless us. God would really give us the wisdom in every decision na gagawin natin. Pero sana naman wag tayo maging prideful na thinking, ate, ka lang, kami lang yung mga, mga Kristiyano dito, kami lang yung mapupunta sa langit. Let's do it with a humble heart. So ngayon, naniniwala ako, nangungusap ang Holy Spirit sa atin, nangungusap ang Panginoon sa atin, that God will give you a way to lay up treasures in heaven because we know that we are doing it for God. Why is that? Balik tayo sa Matthew 6. Sabi dyan, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I like this. Kung saan mo daw nilagay, yung mga bagay na tinetreasure mo, yung something na precious sa'yo, nandun daw yung puso ng isang tao. Ibig sabihin, you are affectionate, you're gonna love, parang ganito yan. Imagine this. Uh, kung ang, ang treasure mo nasa banko, if we can be honest enough, met-met, check natin yung account natin. Kung ang treasure mo nasa stocks, Met, may hachi check mo ano bang nangyayari ngayon sa stocks. Kung ang treasure mo nasa bahay, lagi kang tatawag, ah, kamusta dyan sa bahay? Okay lang ba tayo dyan? Kung ang treasure mo nasa gamit, you would always protect yung, yung bagay na yun. You know, I remember one story. Nakakalungkot man isipin. Merong isang couple, okay, sa sobrang yaman nila, may mga collection silang mga antique sa bahay. Okay? And wala pa silang anak. 
And they were praying to God na, Lord, bigyan mo naman kami ng anak. And in God's sovereignty, and God is so faithful, binigyan sila ng anak. So alam niyo yung pag yung anak, medyo two years old na, di ba, yung mga parents dito, magtatakbo na yan. Okay? So ang nangyari, one time, dahil sa sobrang hyper na yung anak, two years old na, nabasag yung isa sa mga mamahalin na antique. And you know what the, the, the mom did? Alam mo, siyempre in English, pero tatagalogin ko na lang, okay? Namiss ko magtagalog kasi sa Korea kailangan mag-English, okay? Ikaw talagang bata ka, ang bata-bata mo, di ba alam na mahal to, na alam mo yun, yung hindi mo kayang bayaran to, na tapos pinagpapapalo, pinagbubugbog, iniingat-ingatan ko to, antik to. May nakaka-relate, baka sinabihan siya ng ganun, di ba? And sometimes, what's happening is this, minsan, mas binabalyo natin yung gamit kaysa dun sa anak natin. Nasunog yung damit, or natapon yung ganto, or nasira yung ganto, pipingutin na yung anak, or maybe tayo yung mga produkto ng ganong mga magulang. Di ba? Amen? <laughs> Binatuwa ka ng tatay mo, anak, ano ka ba? Binangga mo yung kotse, hello? Kasi bakit? Kasi yun yung tinetreasure. Kaya ngayon, wala doon yung puso. But again, i-check po natin yung heart natin. I hope, and my prayer is this, that more than the things of this world, we would treasure what is really treasurable, if there's such a word. Papahalagahan natin kung ano yung dapat pahalagahan. So kung trabaho o asawa mo, asawa. Barkada o pamilya mo, pamilya. Hello? Are you guys getting this? So again, the question is this. Where do we store? Now, let's talk about what do we see? Okay? May question ako sa inyo. Sino sa inyo tingin nyo dito, malapit na siyang mapuno itong baso? Can you raise your hand? Malapit na mapuno yung baso. It's okay. Hindi kayo ano dito. Mabubunta pa rin tayo sa heaven. Okay, baba nyo na yung kamay. Sino sa inyo, uh, malapit nang maubos yung laman ng baso? Pakitaas yung kamay. Sige na, okay lang yan. So dito, kahit anong tanong ko po, hindi kayo magtataas ng kamay. Okay. <laughs> Obira. <laughs> okay. What, what I realize is this. The way we see or view things differ from one another. Yung ibang tingin nila mauubos na, yung iba tingin niya halos mapupuno, mapupuno no. You know why? Because our perspective matters. That's why Jesus addressed this. That the eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. Anong ibig sabihin niyan? I like the word yung lamp. During their time, sobrang importante po yung, yung lamp. Kasi, hello, pag gabi po doon, wala pa silang meralko, okay? wala pa silang mga flashlight, lamp po yung pinakaginagamit nila. So yung lamp na yon tumutulong sa kanila pag maglalakad sila, pag may kukunan sila, pag madilim yung, yung, yung bahay nila. Sobrang helpful po at sobrang importante ito. And now, Jesus was telling the people na yung mata daw natin, it's like a lamp. It should help us, it should guide us, and it should protect us pagdating sa mga bagay na to. But the thing is this, healthy po ba daw yung mata natin? Why? Because if our eye is healthy, then we would see things according to the kingdom of God. But the problem is this verse, but if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? Ito, may mga question ako para sa atin, para malaman natin ito, diagnose. Diagnosis lang naman to, di ba? Diagnostic test, okay? Um, ang issue po, pag may, may mali sa mata natin, dalawa lang pwede mangyari. We have poverty mentality. We would always think na, kawawa naman ako, uh, ang hirap-hirap naman ng buhay, or greed. Alam niyo po yung greed? Greed one, greed two, hindi. Okay, yung greed, yung, yung gahaman, yung I want more, I need more, okay? Okay? So, eto po yun. Eto na lang. Sino po sa inyo, pag nagbukas po kayo ng damit nyo, ay, ng closet nyo, tapos sinasabi nyo, ay, wala na akong masuot. Panibabae yung nag-react mali ata, okay? Di ba? Tapos sasabi mo sa asawa mo, ay, wala na akong masuot, kailangan akong mag-shopping. Hello? Parang, ito yung cabinet ko. Oh. Parang, parang, ang sarap i-ampas sa mukha, di ba? Hello? But, of course, I'm just exaggerating, hindi pa ako galit. 
You get what I'm saying? Or, uh, ano pa bang meron? Uh, uh, Tim naman yung bahay namin or yung coaching din na drive. Why? Kasi po, yung problema, yung mata. And I like this story in the Bible wherein si Ananias and Zafira. Kung hindi nyo po nababasa pa yan, basahin nyo po mamaya sa Acts 5, okay, verses 1 to 11. Namatay po si Zafira dahil sa pera. Seriously. During their time, yung mga believers po, they were, they were selling their possession and they were offering it to God. So lahat, sige, come on, sold out tayo para kay God. Pero ito pong nangyari sa kanila, mag-asawa po sila, hindi po nila nirimit ng 100%. Why? Because they were tempted and nakita nila, teka lang, parang ang dami nang nagbibigay doon, ba't pa ako magbibigay? Sa akin na lang to, may mga pangangailangan din naman ako. And yun po yung issue pag meron kang poverty mentality and greed. Actually, magkapatid po sila eh. Kambal po yung poverty at greed. And to give us a, kumbaga, a glimpse of what greed does sa atin, it's like a trap. It start with little things. Na kailangan ko to or kawawa naman ako. Until you realize na parang kinain ka na ng sistema na wala ka nang magawa. Na parang feeling mo, ito ng buhay mo na natrap ka na. But I hope, you know, this video would remind us that we would learn how to discover and how to live in a life that is contented to what God has given us already. Maganda man yung bahay mo o hindi maganda, maganda man yung trabaho mo o hindi, kumakain ka man ng mga masasarap na pagkain o hindi, for as long as every morning, we would experience the mercy of God na humihinga tayo, buhay pa tayo, at nakakapagpapuri tayo sa Panginoon, I think it's okay. But again, the question is this, what do we see? Kamusta po ba yung mata natin? And we're about to end, I'm gonna call our keyboardist. Again, kamusta po ba yung mata natin? Do we have a healthy eye? Or yung mata po natin medyo unhealthy po siya? Now, we would always want to, alam mo yun, get, get, and get. The reason why this is important is because our eternal perspective affects our earthly priorities. If we would see things in light with God's kingdom, then yung mga decision po na gagawin natin dito sa mundo, it's going to be simple. It's not easy, but it's simple. Why? Hindi naman, sa totoo lang, hindi naman talaga madaling magbigay ng tithe. Imagine. It's okay, start ano, uh, playing the piano. Sa totoo lang, many people, they were offended. 10% ibibigay ko sa church? Ano gagawin nila sa 10%? Bibigay ko kay God? Kailangan ba ni God ng pera? Eh, God nga siya, di ba? Parang kaya niya mag-create ng pera. Why would I give it? Why would I, alam mo yun, yung bless a real life? Ba't kailangan kong gawin itong mga bagay na to. Again, it's not easy, but it's simple. Why? Kasi kung yung values po natin are clear, decisions are simple. It's just a matter of, will this honor God? Yes or no? Will this please God? Yes or no? So ngayon, yung pag-handle natin sa pera natin, ang question ngayon is, will this honor God? No? Ah! Will this honor God? Yes. Mahihirapan tayo? mag a yung lifestyle natin? It's okay. Because we're not meant to live here on earth forever. Because we have an eternal perspective. Pero sa totoo lang, mahirap po yun. Kasi ang next question ko para sa atin is this, who do we serve? Sabi ni Jesus, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one or love the other or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. It's possible. Naakala natin hindi natin sinaserve yung money, pero sa totoo lang, pwedeng maging master po natin yung money. Kasi yung idea ng pagiging master dyan, ibig sabihin, siya yung nagmamayari sa'yo. He owns you. 
So I think this is a good question for us. Do you possess money or does money possess you? Yung, pag, yung pera bang meron tayo ngayon, alam mo na kahit mawala yan, maubos yan, hindi ka magpapanik, hindi ka magagalit sa Panginoon, or yung pera mo na meron ka ang nagdidictate ng buhay mo, ng buhay natin. It's hard. But this is a good question. Sino ba yung master ng buhay natin? It's easy to say, it's God. Pero paglabas natin dito, pag dumaan na yung pang-araw-araw natin, yung gastusin, yung tuition fee, yung pambayad ng Meralco, we can be tempted. Pwede kang mangutang, pwede kang magnakaw, pwede kang magsinungaling just for the sake of paying those things. Because that's the reality of this life, of this world. And sa totoo lang, apart from Christ, we are all slave sa pera. You know why? Because of sin. Dahil sa kasalanan, mas gugustuin nating sundin ang pera kaysa sa Panginoon. But I thank God, despite our sinfulness, na kahit anong kasalanan na nagawa natin, na kahit everyday tinatalikuran natin siya, nagagalit tayo sa Kanya, yung Panginoon, tinitreasure niya po yung bawat isa sa atin. Pinapahalagahan niya po yung bawat isa sa atin. Alam niyo po kung, yung, kung paano niya pinakita yon, Yung binigay niya, yung nag-iisa niyang anak, si Jesus, para pagbayaran yung kasalanan natin so that hindi tayo maging slave ng kasalanan, maging slave ng mundo na to, na kung saan pera yung magpapatakbo sa buhay natin, pero hindi. Pinresure niya tayo, niligtas niya tayo, so that we can have again the God who created us, bought us with this blood. Para hindi daw tayo maging slave sa kasalanan, para maging slave tayo sa righteousness. That's why in Romans 6, 17, 18, I'd like to end with this verse. But thanks be to God, that you were once slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the standard of the teaching to which you were committed, and having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. This is a very theological verse wherein, dahil daw po sa ginawa ng Panginoon para sa atin, kaya natin maging ligtas, kaya natin makawala dito sa issue natin, sa pera, sa property, at sa wealth. Bakit daw po? Dahil sa ginawa ng Panginoon para sa atin. Namatay si Jesus sa cross. Hindi lang para pagbayaran ng kasalanan natin, pero para bigyan tayo ng bagong buhay, ng magandang buhay, na magkaroon tayo ng relationship sa Kanya, at upang yung buhay natin na habang nandito tayo ngayon, makapagbigay tayo ng honor at ng glory sa Kanya.